Pip Pip, Tally Ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy these videos. And today we're going to head up towards Kentish Town. We're starting here in Camden. Kentish Town comes from Kenditch which is, I think in Old English meant uh, the bed of the waterway, because in Celtic actually also Ken means green or river, because this is where the River Fleet used to uh, flow. So we're going to be following the roots, sort of, of the River Fleet, which flows underground now. But uh, back in 1826, this was the main area where it used to flood quite a lot. It was quite swampy around here. And uh, it actually flooded so much, it was about 65 feet wide of river down here. That's why it's called Water Lane. You see these rather questionable buildings. I mean, I mean these days they look a little bit tatty. I quite like them, to be honest. They're very sci-fi-esque, you know? <laughs> I bet, I'm sure they looked amazing when they were first built. But um, they're just back onto the canal here. But this is the back of Sainsbury's. And Sainsbury's was built on the site of the old ABC. There's a massive building there on Camden Road. The ABC was the aerated bread company and it existed since 1862. They created their own special process of, of making bread or something, but they became more popular as tea rooms and people are always going to them in novels like Dracula and uh, Somerset Maugham novels, Agatha Christie books, P.G. Woodhouse. They always would get to say, oh, we took tea at the ABC, which is anyway, in 1982 it closed down and they built the, the big Sainsbury's. Anyway, you can still see these ghost signs of the abandoned aerated bread companies dotted around London. There's one down on Fleet Street, uh, down next to Tai Square. But just opposite is this building here, look. This was the old Camden Town Brewery. Can you see above the door there's an elephant? Elephant Ale, I think it was called, it was very popular. Now, I don't know if that's a reference to the Elephant Ale, or it could also be a reference to the coat of arms of the Earl of Camden. Oh no, it's the Marquis of Camden, because like, it's called Camden after the Earl of Camden, Charles Pratt. That's why you get a lot of streets called Pratt Street and stuff like that. But his son was the Marquis of Camden, and he had uh, an elephant's head on his coat of arms. And that's why you can see even on the railings there, it's quite nice, they've got these cute little elephant's heads on the railings as well. Didn't spot them before, but... Yeah, it's been there since about 1900. I was born and bred in London It's the only city I know Though it's foggy and cold and wet I'd be willing to take a bet I, I better sort of say where we are. We're in Camden Gardens. Kentish Town Road over there was one of the oldest roads out of London, heading up towards Highgate. But I just want to point out over here, actually, Simon, don't trip over that. Look, along this route, there's a lot of points on offer, because look on that building over there. You can see a fire insurance plaque for Sun, the Sun Fire Office. Now, the Sun Fire Office, they were the, the first documented insurance company in the world, I think, started in 1710. These days, they're still going, actually, um, because they, they merged uh, with someone else, and now they've become the Sun Alliance. And uh, if you had one of these fire insurance plaques and you, your house caught on fire, they could come and put it out, because I think you only had your, ha your fire extinguished by the company who insured you. So the, well, these houses here, if they had caught on fire, they would just be uh, left to burn. It's hard to tell if it's authentic or not. I think so. I think it's authentic. Someone's painted over it. Now, King Henry II ordered for all the Middlesex forests, which was around this area, to be cleared because uh, London was expanding and they needed a uh, sort of place to provide crops and cattle and stuff for food for London. Um, and in 1218, it was recorded as being called Kentiston. Um, so. I suppose that became corrupted to become Kentish Town. By the late 18th century, it became a slightly nicer place to live if you were a bit more affluent. London, here's a little bit of all right, nobody can deny. Look over here, look, Wilmot Place, just at the end of Jeffreys Street. Look at that house here. Let's go over there, Simon. It's okay, you're safe. You're safe to cross the road. That used to be the Camden Falcon. I attended many gigs in there. In fact, it was after a gig in there that I believe Blur got signed. So Blur played there, uh, The Darkness, Coldplay. I mean, I guess it's just someone's front room now. It's such a pity. I love these old venues, but I suppose someone now is probably sitting there in their front room having a cup of tea on, on their, you know, their armchair, 
not being aware of the fact that about 25 years ago, I was in there watching a band called Nutmeg, who was superb, by the way. Arms in the air, they always used to finish with their anthem. Whoa, rock and roll, gonna make it on a wasted I would definitely look up Nutmeg on the internet. You can listen to their album, uh, it's called Electric Putty. I wish they still existed, they were a brilliant band. Throw me a line and sing Bow Bells, Big Ben, up to the heath and down again. And if you should visit the monkeys in the zoo, bring a banana. The the love we have just goes on and on. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this is called Jeffrey's. Terrace. And she's named after Elizabeth Jeffreys, who was the wife of that Earl of Camden that I was talking about. You know, we just went up Jeffreys Street. It gives you some idea. In 1813, when they were advertising the properties here in the paper or something, it said that it commanded spectacular views of the countryside with hourly stages to London. Um, so, I mean, you, you don't exactly get much of a view of the countryside these days, but you pr probably could have seen all the way across to Primrose Hill, I suppose. And, uh, and one of the problems they had uh, along this stretch of, of road was highwaymen, and, and, and they used to attach bells to their shutters in these houses, just in case these highwaymen and robbers and what have you would break in. I wonder if they still exist in some of these properties, those little bells. That would be nice. But I went to a school where I spent ages trying to learn how to use an apostrophe. They can't even get it right there. She's called Elizabeth Jeffreys, and that's why it's called Jeffreys Terrace. But it shouldn't have an apostrophe. It doesn't mean it belonged to Geoffrey, because her name was Elizabeth Jeffreys. Anyway, apparently these days it doesn't matter. So, oh. look, Dunn's Hat Factory, George Arthur Dunn. From 1895 to about 1984, I think he had hundreds of stores. And of course, in the days when everyone wore a hat, it was quite a good business to be in. In fact, hundreds of years before, it was actually the law to wear a hat. You, you had to wear a hat. I think, they, I think they brought in a law in order to, uh, you know, to help the various trades. Um, but yeah, I mean, now it's uh, just some offices of some sort. But just over there, we have cash converters. <laughs> but actually, it's quite nice that they've got the pawnbroker's balls. That means pawnbroker. But anyway, yeah, that's the site of the old South Kentish Town Station. It's quite appropriate that I'm just walking past here uh, at the time of filming, a few days before Halloween, because I went in there in my Halloween episode where we go searching for ghosts with the paranormal investigators. But actually, if you want to watch the whole video about it, you can go and check out my uh, Haunted London video. But uh, let's just let Vintage Jewels explain a few things about it. <laughs> Kentish Town, and just over there is Kentish Town South Tube Station. This got abandoned in about 1924. It wasn't even open for very long. After they had one of their famous power cuts, they just thought, you know, not enough people are using it, so let's close it. But uh, apparently there was a ghost in here. I mean, John Betjeman wrote a famous story about this place, and it was based on a true story. Not all the trains used to stop here. They only used to stop occasionally. And um, one guy got off, and he ended up getting lost in the station. And uh, I think the train buzzed off without him and he couldn't get out or something. Aren't you scared being in here with all the ghosts? Scared? Yeah. Already scared? No. No? I've seen nothing. <laughs> He's very skeptical out there. Is he? All yeah. right. Well, no, I'm... Be careful of the step. Hey, this is cool. Well, then again, baby, you have to admit, you have uh, seen a few things with us. Change your hair. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, an escape room. We lock the people in. <laughs> oh, to, please don't lock me in with these guys. <laughs> and they have to solve puzzles to, to escape. Oh, wow. And you are here in the real disused tube station that closed uh, 100 years ago and they call it the ghost tube station. You can't go down to the actual platform because it's still part of the active northern line, but its eerie atmosphere makes it a perfect place to look for ghosts. If you want to come and take part in his game, you can visit missionbreakout.london. Excellent. Do, do they get to dress up or anything? Yeah, they get the uniform. Oh, wicked. Look at all this stuff. He's even got my size. How do I look? <laughs> you need a, a cello. There's a lot of uh, instruments actually. I didn't, I've never seen a cash converter. There's so many 
Look, I mean, that, that, those are yeah, handy, yeah, a Wi-Fi on. mic like the ones we use. There you go. And uh, it's always looking for one. Yeah. Back. Watch our lads in the palace yard Troop the colour and change the guard And don't forget your Brawley and your Mac And I'd like to mention London Here's a place where you can call... This used to be the Castle Pub, this building here. Sort of here and, and just set back from the road here, or hereabouts, was where Nelson's, Lord Nelson's uh, uncle used to live. And they say, that, you know, I rather jokingly say, that Lord Nelson used to come and visit his uncle in order to keep an eye on his fleet, because uh, the river fleet ran, ran down the back there. But... Uh, I don't know if that's really the case. Just opposite here, though, you see these... Um, just swing that around, Simon. You see just opposite here, Rochester Road, next to this nice church, those two trees there. I think those are plane trees or something, but there used to be two chestnut trees there which were planted by Lady Hamilton, uh, Admiral Nelson's mistress, and, uh, and she lived just over here along the street here. It's not much to look at now, but just here, I think it was around sort of number 157. There was a house here which they say that uh, Lady Hamilton stayed in after Admiral Nelson died. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's, a, it's quite sad, really, because he, he, his last wish was for the government to look after uh, Lady Hamilton. I mean, he wasn't really married to her, but they did have a child. It's called Horatia. He said, you know, please look after Horatia and uh, Lady Hamilton, make sure that they don't starve. And um, they didn't listen to his final wish, and she ended up going to debtor's prison and ended up in France dying in poverty of dysentery. That's how to treat your heroes. Hello. Parham. Hey, Parham. How you doing? Hi. Salam. Good to see you. Chetori. What's going on? Badnisti. Khubam. I was like, what the hell am I watching here? Yeah, really? Unbelievable. Oh, that's Thank nice. You. Hey, nice set Actually, these houses along here, Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein, she used to live in uh, this sort of terrace along here. And it was from there that she actually watched Lord Byron's funeral procession. His My word. Lord Byron's funeral came past here. Mary Shelley didn't like living in Kentish Town. She described it as an odious swamp. It's interesting. Can you see? Originally, the houses wouldn't have come much further back on the road. They yes, built those shop fronts yeah, yes, yes, on the front. Yeah, they, they, so the, the road would have been a lot yeah, wider yeah. in those days. See, what I like about walking along these kind of roads is that you find these little abandoned old posts and things. You know, it's quite a busy, you know, horrible-looking road in some respects. But the, this is the original old sort of gate posts and stuff from the Congregational Church in 1848. So this, and along with all those houses and stuff, were built in the middle of the 19th century. Yeah, it's quite nice, though, isn't it? You see? Just a weird post just there on its own. You probably wouldn't really notice it. And there... Uh, and that next door, that used to be the post office there until the 1950s. That was, a, that was oh, the see, main yeah. post office. Yeah. yeah. They used to do things nicely in those mm, days. Did, yeah. You know, yeah. that's what a post office should look like. Round and have a cosy cup of tea. If you're fed right up and got your tail right down, then London town is a wonderful place. Do you remember to that be? guy, Charles Booth? I think his name was Charles Booth. He did the poverty map of London. He did, he did describe this street as being the worst street for immorality in the whole of Kentish Town back at the end of the 19th century. It's changed somewhat these days. Maybe it hasn't. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows what goes on behind this door? Hey, steady on. <laughs> Here's a little bit of all right. Nobody can deny that so. The old polytechnic. The women's department was on the top floor. I just like these old buildings. You see above the, the door there where it says entrance. It actually originally said woman's entrance. Oh, yes, you can make so out. Can't women. The, uh, no women in the main entrance. Want women in the women's entrance. And now it's flats, of course. They are a marvellous example of how the old window framing looks compared to the new. Obsessed with window frames. You see that? Do you see it? Well, yeah, you can see where it's open. See, I love those things, oh, Simon. That. I love yes. that, the public baths. A... And they still have a swimming pool in there as well. It's, it's quite majestic. Good. Yeah. It's around 1901, this. Look, men's first class, men's second class. The women's entrance is around the other side there. But, uh, but look, up there, that's St Pancras and St George. 
You can usually tell St Pancras because he's uh, usually he's trampling a, a Roman centurion underfoot. Because but anyway, we are in the old borough of St Pancras. St George is obviously the patron saint of England. Big Ben, bow bells, have a good laugh and watch the swells treating themselves to a trot on Rotten Row, sitting on horses, grove the square or petticoat lane. Look, damn it, another weather vane, which didn't feature in my favourite weather vanes video. I don't know why I've got an obsession with weather vanes, but yeah, have a look at my video about weather vanes, because there's a lovely one up here. This used to be the asylum for aged governesses. Back in 1849 it was built, I think. It's just on the railings here, you can see a G, is it a G-I? Something governesses, is it Institute for governesses? It's... But anyway, a governess was like a private kind of private tutor. You know when you watch those films with very rich houses like um, The Secret Garden or something like that and there'll yeah. be a child and the absent parents and they, they'll have a governess who looks after right, them yes. and teaches them yeah. like how to speak Latin or whatever. Anyway, this was built for when they got old and fell on hard times. But shortly afterwards, they, but you see the trains going by there. And it was supposed to be a nice sort of relaxing re retreat, but by 1872, after they'd built the railway right here, they'd ruined their garden, they'd ruined their view, and they'd ruined their peace and quiet. So they had to up sticks and move to Chislehurst in Kent. You can stray through any neighbourhood. If you haven't a swanky club, just pop into the nearest pub. A little of one Just coming up here to Kentish Town West Station, but just round the side of it, underneath the arches there, is the, the new Camden Brewery, which is where they do the Camden Hells. I'm actually a fan of ah, Camden yes, Hells, we, actually. We, we do like Camden Hells. They do tours of the brewery, and they've got a bar in there. You can sit down and have a beer. I don't think we'll sit down today, because um, we've got more to do. <laughs> East Brinsmead, it's called. It used to be a piano factory. I should have said this, Ooh. actually. So many of the warehouses and stuff around here were piano factories. It was the main place in England to get pianos made. And of course, back in those days, like in the 19th century, most well-to-do households aspired to have a piano. And this was one of the main ones. They made pianos for Queen Victoria and King Edward VII. Look, and round the back here, you can see they had a little trolley mechanism. Um, look, there's little tra tram tracks over there. These led all the way up to the piano factory, and I dare say they would have had all sorts of winches and stuff. So, so the trains coming through here explains why a lot of the better off people decided to move out to escape all the noise. If you're fed right up and got your tail right down, then London town is a wonderful place to be. My trousers are too tight, so I can't bend down and, and here, but along Cathcart Street, You've got the, the, the River Fleet runs all the way underneath here. And you can sometimes hear it at some of these grates. I don't know if that's one of them. There's some further along. But as you walk along this area, you see quite a few of these things. And sometimes you can hear the River Fleet, or see it even, oh, trickling really? past underneath. In fact, back in 2002, it, it flooded. It does sometimes still flood. I suppose all the houses must have been built at the time of the Crimean War, right, middle of the 19th century. Like these are all famous battles, the Battle of Inkerman, uh, Battle of Alma, I think was the first battle of the Crimean War. And this used to be a pub here um, on Inkerman Road, look, and they still got, it was called the Crimea. Now it's obviously turned into luxury flats. <laughs> but uh, look, you've still got the old sign, which is nice. I'm glad they've kept the old pub kind of, uh, what do you call that? Pubanalia? Signage. <laughs> Charles Booth, in his poverty map, he did record that three prostitutes lived in this street, <laughs> uh, but there weren't any brothels. And the river continues all the way down here, down Alma Street, to Angler's Lane. And it's called Angler's Lane because fishermen used to find it a very pretty spot to go and do their fishing, which is at the end there. In fact, that big building at the end is the old false teeth factory. <laughs> Claudius Ash, who was like, uh, a goldsmith or silversmith, he opened up this uh, false teeth factory. They finally moved away in the 1960s, but it was the biggest false teeth factory in Europe. And if the women who worked there had to be unmarried, but they all said it was a really great place to work. It was very prestigious. They liked working here. Originally, he made his false teeth out of like a gold plate with ivory from walruses and hippopotamuses. <laughs> so back in 1909, 
to give you an idea of how much it's changed, they interviewed an old man. He was in his wheelchair, reminiscing about the days when he used to come down here and, and fish. When I knew it as a boy, it was one of the loveliest spots imaginable, so deserted in the early hours of the morning that when anglers were not there, some of the youngsters from the cottages around used to bathe in the river. I passed by some time ago and couldn't believe the wheels of my chair were rolling over the river fleet. Can you imagine this old fella coming down here and uh, thinking, what happened to that lovely spot I used to go fishing? <laughs> this is all factories and houses. Just round the corner here. So we're heading back onto Kentish Town Road now. Simon, have you ever been to Rio's Health Spa? Yeah, many times. <laughs> this is a legendary place. Oh, is it? OK. Yeah, it's quite legendary. Yeah, I've, yeah. But I've, I, honest, I have never been inside, but I do know quite a few people who have. Yeah, uh, yeah. oh, well, have you? <laughs> she didn't believe me. No, but I love, I love the way they've got all the kind of, like, palm trees and everything there on Kentish Town Road. But yeah, it's, it's basically for nudists. Oh, I mean, okay. essentially, you go in there and, uh, well... Just hang out. You just hang out. Yeah, yeah, it's a place to make friends, Simon. To relax and make friends. Yeah. Depends yeah. if you find it relaxing being surrounded by mm. naked people. Mm -hmm. It's London's leading naturist spa. Got open quite late as well. And, uh, you know, they've got jacuzzis, a TV room. And uh, as you can hear from the glamorous sounds around us, it's, it's obviously very much like being on a beach in Rio. <laughs> but opposite there, what I like, it's a good city. What I really like about these things, look at that. Abbott Electronics uh, TV Video Repair Centre. That, you can tell that is a sign from the 1980s, yeah. can't you? You know, remember Grundig, we used... It's got a Grundig sign on it. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember you used to get your TV repaired? I mean, no, that, yeah, no way. That's right. Who gets a TV Every repair? Every had a TV repair man. Yeah. Feed the ducks in Battersea Park or take a trip to Kew. It only costs a tanner there and back. It's a lovely old police station here from 1896. It used to be up near uh, the Assembly Rooms pub opposite Kentish Town Station. They moved here in 1896. But what I like about it is that you can still see the archway there that was used for the old horse and cart. I think they were called Black Marias or Black Marias or whatever. Anyway, it's a nice classic old station there. What's this? Ice Slip Street. This school opposite, look at that, that's where they filmed Baggy Trousers, the video, where Madness did that. You know when he flies up in the air on the, on the saxophone <laughs> play. He's, he's, he's flying up in the yeah, air yeah. on the... I think he said he was inspired after seeing Peter Gabriel do it at a Genesis concert. Diddly ling, de, de, de. Naughty boys in nasty schools, headmasters breaking all the rules, having fun and playing fools, smashing up the woodwork tools. They've completely changed it now, so we can't really go inside. I think you can sort of, the little turret on top of the school, you can kind of make that out from the video, but apart from that, it's all changed. And then they film a bit of it, all the kids running around and, you know, stuff. That's on the estate, just a little bit further down there. But, uh, but we're going this way. When I looked around here, I, I really wanted some good vegetables. And I thought, I'll buy a few, you know, a cucumber, courgette, some tomatoes, whatever. I literally, just a, not even a basket full, just, and I thought, I, I went... I mean, I saw, I don't know if it's this place, it's, it's, it's similar. It was like 15 quid or something. I was honestly <laughs> expecting it. I'd be one pound 50, mate. Or whatever. <laughs> so I had to give a credit card out. I was like, what the hell is this? It's funny you should say that because uh, that was my exact reaction in a, in a TV ad. Like, you remember that egg.com ad? I was in an egg.com ad and they filmed it just over there. I, everything's changing around here, but there used to be a sports shop there. That's where we filmed it, and I had to, I had to have this sock on my hand. It was going, oh, I thought it was so I It's 48 quid, mate. 48? <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, yeah, thank you. Hey! 48 quid! What are you doing if it's different? You should have come here, Simon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's why I quite like the fact that they've still got these signs, because some of them, they scrub them off. But look there, on the, underneath where it says Kentish Town, it says oh, trellis yeah, 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 and joinery it. works. Yeah. And that's, that's an old, so the old timber yard yeah, that used to be here. I probably probably got knocked down because of the railway coming through. But that's, uh, it's nice that they keep that stuff. Yeah, well spotted. Cheers. 
Cheers, Simon. Cheers. Cheers. This is a lovely pub. This was uh, on the crossroads, I suppose. This this road would have headed all the way up to Islington, and uh, it was very popular back in 1721. This has been here since then, and uh, they had uh, all sorts of leisure activities like skittles. So it was like a pleasure garden, and it attracted people on their days out from London. So anyway, you might recognise it from the film uh, Villain, starring Richard Burton and Ian McShane. Yeah. Anyway, cheers. If you enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And um, if you want to know more about me, you can head over to my website, julesguides.com, and also uh, follow me on my Instagram, which is Jules Guides Official. See you next time. Cheers, Simon. Give us a cheers. Come on. Cheers. Right up, got your tail right down. Then London town is a wonderful place to be. Thank you.